Prabhuji, we are reading the Trimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 2, Chapter 9, and the text for today is Text 5. So, Prabhuji, over to you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you for having me with you today and allowing me to be of service. So, we are continuing with Canto 2, Chapter 9, which is entitled Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. Text is number 5. So I will read the Sanskrit. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Saadi Devo Jagatam Paro Guru. Radishtam Ashtaya Shashikshayak Shata. Tanajikacha Trishamatra Sammatam. Rapunch Nirman Vidir Yaya Bhavet. Word for word, Sa He Adi Deva, the first demigod, Jagatam of the universe, Para, Supreme, Guru, Spiritual Master, Swadishnyam, his lotus seat, Ashtaya, to find the source of it, Trishikshaya, for the matter of creating the universal affairs. Aikshata began to think. Tam, in that matter, na, could not, adyagachat, understand, drisham, the direction, atra, therein, sammatam, just the proper way, prapancha, material, nirmana, construction, vidi, process, yaya, as much as, vaved, should be. Translation in purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Translation, Lord Brahma, the first spiritual master, supreme in the universe, could not trace out the source of his lotus seat. And while thinking of creating the material world, he could not understand the proper direction for such creative work, nor could he find out the process for such creation. Purport. This verse is the prelude for explaining the transcendental nature of the form and the abode of the Lord. In the beginning of Srimad Bhagavatam, it has already been said that the Supreme Absolute Truth exists in his own abode without any touch of the deluding energy. Therefore, the kingdom of God is not a myth, but factually a different and transcendental sphere of planets known as the Vaikuntas. This will be explained in this chapter. Such knowledge of the spiritual sky far above this material sky and its paraphernalia can be known only by dint of devotional service or bhakti yoga. The power of creation by Lord Brahma was also achieved by bhakti yoga. Brahmaji was bewildered in the manner of creation and he could not even trace out the source of his own existence. But all this knowledge was fully achieved by him through the medium of Bhakti Yoga. By Bhakti Yoga, one can know the Lord, and by knowing the Lord as the Supreme, one is able to know everything else. One who knows the Supreme knows everything else. That is the version of all the Vedas. Even the first spiritual master of the universe was enlightened by the grace of the Lord, so who else can attain perfect knowledge of everything without the mercy of the Lord? If anyone desires to seek perfect knowledge of everything, he must seek the mercy of the Lord, and there is no other means. To seek knowledge on the strength of one's personal attempt is a sheer waste of time. In the text again, Lord Brahma, the first spiritual master, supreme in the universe, could not trace out the source of his lotus seed. And while thinking of creating the material world, he could not understand the proper direction for such creative work nor could he find out the process, process for such creation. As we may remember, uh, Marge Brinkett, one of the prime characters in the Srimad Bhagavatam. He and Sukadeva Goswami 
Maharaj Pariket was cursed to die, and um, Shukadev Goswami appeared to explain or to answer Maharaj Pariket's question, what does one do at the end of one's life, at the time of death? And Maharaj Pariket asked a number of questions. And so the uh, answers are beginning. And this chapter is entitled Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. So Srila Prabhupada begins uh, that this verse is uh, the beginning of explaining the transcendental nature of Krishna and Krishna's uh, home or home, his country. Just like we have our countries and continents, so Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has his, uh, what they say, Dham, or his abode. And Srila Prabhupada says that uh, the Supreme Absolute Truth exists in his own abode. Therefore, the kingdom of God is not a myth. So there are some people who are very unfamiliar with spirituality and uh they don't uh, understand very much about God. And naturally, uh, it's very hard for them to believe, which is understandable. Uh, there's other people who have grown up in religious families. And they have some idea of God. and It's a little easier. But in any case, just like we have our place of living, so... God does too. Yeah. As Srila Prabhupada says, the kingdom of God is not a myth, but factually a different and transcendental sphere of planets known as the Vaikuntas. Such knowledge of the spiritual sky can be known only by devotional service or bhakti yoga. So we may remember from Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita gives us the most basic, uh, fundamental understanding of bhakti yoga, of Krishna and uh, ourselves. So there, in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains that bhakti yoga, tesham satatam yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam Yenamam upayantite. Lord Krishna tells Arjuna that uh, those who worship him with love and devotion, he gives them the intelligence by which to come to him. And uh, elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains that for his devotees, he destroys the darkness within the heart, and he is able to do that. Uh, how? Because uh, uh, Krishna is the uh, is the uh, all pervading super soul. He is with everyone. He is with us, and he is the one who has his he has his hands on the uh, knob. You know, for water, you can make the water come on. And you can turn the water off, right? When you go to the sink, you turn the water on and you can turn it off. So Krishna, he can, and he does, he turns our knowledge on and off. And he turns our remembrance, smriti. We are not absolutely in control of our memory, are we? Does anyone have experience of not being able to remember something? Of course. <laughs> I don't remember what I had for lunch two weeks ago on Tuesday. Does anyone remember two weeks ago on Tuesday? Probably not. <laughs> it's only two weeks. Uh, perhaps even four days ago. What did we have for lunch? Sometimes we are looking for a book. We're looking for keys to the car. And we look. <laughs> we can't remember. Is it not? 
So this proves that we are not 100% in control of our memory. And then, is it not true that all of a sudden, zap, we remember, right? Oh, yes. I left the book there. I left my keys there. My shirt, I left it at my friend's house, right? Just boom. It just comes out of nowhere, right? Yes. Uh, so many ideas, they just, they just come to us very quick. And other times, no ideas come. Sometimes people are under anesthesia. They are unconscious or drunk. You know, they drink a lot of alcohol and they become quite uh, dull-headed, right? Forgetful. They don't know where they are. You drink enough, is it not? So uh, our uh, Krishna says, Sarvastita hamridi sani vistas matir smitir. Krishna, God, ultimately controls what we know. Just like there are people who have the ability of what is called remote viewing. They are able to be in a room and get some idea, some accurate idea, what is happening at another place. Uh, it is uh, inability. And there are people, well, especially young, when they're uh, six years old or younger, three, four, five years old, they remember previous life. They are able to remember, yes, I lived in this house, and this house had this painting, and it had this dog, and it had... This is my uncle, this is my aunt. And they uh, have never met those people, but they can tell all about them. So how is that? So uh, Krishna, God knows everything. Uh, sometimes we can remember things from when we were two years old, no? One and a half years old. I can, I can remember one or two things when I was two years old. Sometimes we can remember very vividly um, a certain house or a place we visited. We can see in our mind the faces of the people. We can remember conversations. Is it not? Sometimes we remember songs, music, and the whole song plays in our head, right? And then other times we can't remember. What was that song? I don't remember. So Krishna, God, he uh, is uh, Ishwar, Ishwar Parama Krishna Satchid Ananda Vigraha. God is full of knowledge. And so he, he uh, can let any of us know anything or not. So Krishna says, Tesham Satyatam Yuktanam Bhajatam Priti Purvakam. If you please me, by your bhakti, I will give you a spot on intelligence how to come to me. Just like we see these, uh, any kind of uh, expert, you know, like these, I think of the athletes when they do the high dives uh, or they play cricket uh, or soccer, uh, anything. Uh, they get such good intelligence, is it not? They know they get what to do at the right time, right? It's And they get such, or like even a surgeon, a doctor, they get such good understanding what to do. They are successful. And other people, maybe we know someone. Uh, I can think of myself sometimes. There's, it becomes so uh, cloudy, right? We don't. Or you wake up at uh, very early in the morning. You don't know where you are, what you're doing. <laughs> you cannot accomplish anything. <laughs> so, um, by pleasing Krishna, Krishna can let us know anything. Anything. The uh, Therefore, very advanced Devotees of Krishna, that would be very advanced, uh, pure devotees of Krishna, 
Uh, they can know anything. They can know what you're thinking. They can know anything Krishna wants them to know. And Krishna will let them know whatever they know because of their bhakti. So this is what is being explained here. That as we become dear to Krishna, as we please Krishna by bhakti yoga, then he will reveal in our heart. Uh, in a little while, we will read how Lord Brahma, he saw Lord Brahma uh, uh, will see the spiritual world. Just like we watch, we may watch, uh, people watch television. You know, you see the television and the signal is coming from some place and it's coming through the television. Um, so we have television inside our soul, what they call the mind's eye. Even we, well, of course, we all have some experience. We can see images of our children or friends from the past. We can kind of see them. We remember what they look like, our parents. We can remember, we can see images of uh, places we have lived. It is just like we are there. So Krishna can't let us see anything through the television of our soul. So this is how it works. So this bhakti, by pleasing Krishna, and if we want, because it has, we also have to want. We have to specifically want self-realization. I want to see myself. I want to see Krishna. I want to experience the spiritual world. We have to think that. We have to want that. And uh, if we please Krishna, uh, then uh, eventually uh, he will let us see or see more. Uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, explains that just like the sun, when the sun rises in the morning, it doesn't just, it isn't just all of a sudden way up there, right? It slowly comes up. So the same way, our uh, Krishna jnana, uh, Krishna vijnana, it develops gradually, and we get more and more direct realization of the holy name, of the spiritual nature of the holy names of Krishna, the spiritual nature of the deities of Krishna, the spiritual nature of the transcendental books about Krishna, uh, the spiritual master, the reality of our own spiritual identity, just like the sun, it gradually increases if we want, especially if we want, and we practice pleasing Krishna, devotional service. So someone, we, we hear that we should only want Krishna prema, that a pure devotee does not want anything. Do we not hear that? That a pure devotee does not desire anything but the pleasure of Krishna. So that's true. Uh, and it may be that we are on that level of pure devotion. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Srila Prabhupada instructs us that generally we should desire and ask Krishna for self-realization. And that is pure devotion in the sense that Krishna wants that. Krishna wants me to be self-realized. Krishna wants me back in the spiritual world. Uh, Krishna wants me to uh, understand him. So it will please Krishna if we have those kind of desires. And it may be, or it is uh, true, technically, that, that's not the way the gopis or the friends of Lord Krishna speak, but I know I'm not a friend of Krishna <laughs> and I'm not a gopi. I'm, not, I'm nowhere near that kind of advancement. I appreciate it, but that's not where I am. But that, you know, that's me. So uh, if we're not at that level, then there's nothing wrong. And we are instructed to desire like that when we chant Hare Krishna and uh, in the course of our devotional service, we uh, we are, uh, we should 
ask Krishna that may I please understand myself, may I see, may I please understand the spiritual world. Will you please, if you so desire, reveal yourself to me more? Let me please appreciate you in the holy name, in your deity. We should think like that. Uh, Krishna will not force realization upon us. Uh, it will come, you may say, mechanically. But if we actually want it, and if we actually ask for it, it will happen sooner. Sometimes uh, there is this, and it's true. It doesn't matter what we think. If we just go on chanting Hare Krishna and doing some service for um, our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, and Lord Chaitanya's son, Kirtan movement, we will uh, gradually realize Krishna more. But if we specifically uh, want it, it will be much quicker. <laughs> it will, we will make quicker advancement in our um, realization of Krishna. So Lord Brahma uh, is it, described here that in the beginning, he didn't understand how to create this whole universe. Uh, he didn't understand where he came from. Uh, and to get that information, he practiced bhakti yoga. And we will hear about that, how he did that. Um, and Krishna became pleased and he understood everything. Eventually, Lord Krishna came and shook his hand. Yes, Krishna came and shook his hand, talked to him directly. So we can have that. We should not think it is only for Lord Brahma. No, uh, all of us, um, if we want and if we practice bhakti yoga. So Siddha Prabhupada says like this, right? Brahmaji was bewildered and he could not even trace out the source of his existence. But all this knowledge was fully achieved uh, by him through bhakti yoga. By bhakti yoga, one can know the Lord. And by knowing the Lord as the supreme, one knows everything. So Srila Prabhupada uh, goes on that to seek knowledge and strength of one's personal attempt is a sheer waste of time. So as they say, it is uh, success in this world is often not so much what we know, but who we know. Is that not true? Sometimes if you know someone, uh, they can get you a job uh, more easily than if you try by yourself. Or if you know someone, you have an uncle or someone who works at a bank, uh, you may be able to get a loan of money quicker. You have an inside connection. So Krishna is our inside connection. And even if we are very, very unqualified, uh, uh, just or not very capable, uh, by our devotion to Krishna, uh, we can uh, still uh, make so much uh, advancement and achieve the highest goal of life because of our bhakti, our relationship with Krishna. Uh, Lord Krishna says, I am not achieved by uh, someone who knows uh, uh, many, many things or who performs great austerities or who has a lot of money. There's no material qualification that will help us to uh, get God's mercy except for our uh, devotion our simple respect and um, attitude of service, seva. Seva mukhe hi jiva do, swayam eva sarat It is this attitude of service uh, that we please Krishna. The Lord Krishna says that I am not in the hearts of the yogis, uh, but I am always in the hearts of my devotees. My devotees, they always remember me, and I always remember them. There is nothing that captures Lord Krishna's attention more than a tiny bit of genuine uh, love uh, and 
uh, that means, and it begins, of course, with respect and um, humility and appreciating, and in later stages, genuine affection and warm love. Isn't that true for all of us, or most of us? Someone may give us so many things, but if we know that they really care about us, that really touches our heart, does it not? You know, even our parents or a boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, anyone, they may give us something. But if we don't really, if, they, if we think they're doing it mechanically, if we think they really don't have feeling for us in their heart, it's not so good, you know, isn't it? Does anyone disagree? Uh, but to know that, you know, uh, someone genuinely uh, feels for us, it's very touching, isn't it? They don't have to give us a big expensive gift. Uh, but uh, just knowing that uh, they care, right? So it, it is the same for Krishna. Uh, there is nothing that moves him. There's nothing that can move him. There's nothing we can give him. There's nothing that will interest him in us except our uh, caring for him. So powerful. Look at Mother Dashoda. Uh, these yogis, there's so many yogis, they sit down and they meditate and they meditate on Om and they uh, try and realize God. And they can do that for millions of births. But Mother Dashoda, she is chasing Krishna with a stick <laughs> and he is running in fear. <laughs> So how is that possible? How is that possible? And Krishna and his friends, the cowherd boys, uh, Sudama, Sridama, Subal, Manamangal, all the cowherd boys, they're playing. And sometimes Krishna is carrying one of them on his shoulders. Or he is letting one of them put feathers in his mouth. Uh, how, is, how is that? Someone is putting feathers in God's mouth. Because of love, that's what he, he, they love him and he loves them. And that's it. That's it. And this is our perfection. Uh, as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us, Lord Chaitanya, Namo Mahavadanaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya, Krishna Chaitanya Namne, Gora Tasdainama, and Rupa Goswami, he, Glorify, O oh Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you are the most magnanimous incarnation. You have appeared to distribute Krishna Prema. Krishna Prema Pradayate. And Lord Nityananda, uh, Nityananda Abhaduta, uh, he has come to uh, Krishna Pradayate, to give Krishna. Uh, this love of Krishna. Such a simple thing. Here in this world, such complicated place, isn't it? This world, we have to work so hard just to eat and have a place to live. And then relationships can be so uh, sometimes difficult and confusing. The relationships with our parents, relationships with friends, relationship with husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. It's just uh, difficult, very difficult. There's so many uh, people are, you know, people are not, often not easy to please. We are not easy to please. It's difficult sometimes to live together. And then there are people who are uh, uh, enemies, right? Jealous people, enemies, difficult people to work with, uh, criminals, murderers. <laughs> but the spiritual world is just a simple place of love. That's all. Just the devotees appreciate Krishna. He's so beautiful. He's so kind. He's so artistic and musical and a wonderful person. And Krishna appreciates us and everyone around us, if we can imagine, is in a good mood. <laughs> Sometimes there are arguments about Krishna, but uh, 
in the spiritual world, people are uh, in a good mood <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and they're caring and loving. And they are, we are all eternal. People don't go away, which is a very hard part of this material life that we form relationships with things and people and then they go away whether it's a favorite car or favorite uh, article of clothing or it's a friend or whoever it may be things they just they come and they go and it hurts it can really hurt but in the spiritual world there may be separation from Krishna, but that it's different. A separation from Krishna is described by Lord Chaitanya as bittersweet, because Krishna is full of bliss. And if but by meditating upon him, even where uh, in any way that we meditate upon Krishna, there is transcendental pleasure. But at the same time, there is uh, sometimes feelings of separation that Krishna goes away. But it is, it's not the same uh, as here. Uh, just like when the when uh, Akrura came to take Lord Krishna and Balaram to Mathura, and the gopis heard about that. They were so, they were angry at Akrura, and they were sad, and they were miserable and depressed. But at the same time, it's not... It's not like here. It's mixed. It's also transcendental bliss at the same time. Little, maybe a little hard to understand. So, anyways, but the spiritual world is a very nice place, very pleasant place. Um, Srila Prabhupada encourages us if we, in the 15th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord uh, Srila Prabhupada says that we should uh, be enthusiastic to go back to Godhead. Just like we may be enthusiastic to go anywhere else. Um, you know, I, I'm sure each of us has some place or some places that are favorite places. And sometimes we want to go there. Oh, I wish I could go there. So Srila Prabhupada says we, sh we should, we must want to go back to Godhead. Yes, I want to go there. Um, and that will bring us to the spirit. We only go where we want to go. See, <laughs> Krishna will not force us. So we should not be shy about that. We should, well, I want to go back to God. I want to go to that place where people are always nice and there's good weather and there's no criminals. And I don't have to pay the mortgage or rent. I don't get teeth infections and ear infections and screaming babies. And <laughs> Not to put down babies, but so many different difficulties uh, in this world. Uh, so we should want to go back to that. Yes. Even we may be young and we thought that's so long in the future. How can I think about that? It's a little easier as you get older. Um, but uh, we don't know. We don't know. We could leave this world next week or next year or tomorrow. Uh, Maharaj Prigat, suddenly uh, he had seven days and here he is finding out what to do and we are finding out what to do to always hear about Krishna and become attracted to him and stay attracted to him <clears throat> and practice remembering him even in difficult times so that when the time of leaving this world comes, we will be practiced. You know, these airline pilots, pilots that fly the um, different uh, airlines um, they go through very intense training of, of uh, dangerous difficult uh, situations so that in case it happens up there they will be prepared they won't uh, they'll know what to do so when we have difficult circumstances something that we can think about is that let this is helping me to prepare for my final departure. And this is absolutely true. Uh, our leaving this world may be, we don't know how it will be. Uh, generally, uh, it is uh, challenging to one degree or the other. And uh, if we are practiced to 
focus our mind on Krishna and to um, remain calm. Remain calm. Um, then that will help us. Uh, and I was just uh, reading again a couple of days ago in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. You know, remember that. Arjuna said, I'm not going to fight. It's just too difficult. And Krishna said, well, while speaking very learned, wise words, actually you're speaking uh, like a person who's not very intelligent uh, because really no one's going to die here. Uh, they'll just change their body and they're going to have to change their body anyway. Uh, you will only be the instrument. And uh, so, and then Arjuna, he said, if not there, elsewhere, he said, well, I, I agree with you, but it's still difficult. Even if theoretically I understand that, I still have feelings for my uh, relatives. So what should I do about that? And Krishna said, one must learn to tolerate. You just have to learn to let it be. That sometimes there is uh, good weather, sometimes there's bad weather, sometimes it's cold, sometimes it's hot. And you must learn to keep an even mind and carry on and just let it come and go. Because isn't it the hot weather, it comes and then it goes. We have a headache and it comes and then it goes. And there's so many different emotional and physical pains. So Lord Krishna says, one who is equal minded in happiness and distress, that person is eligible for liberation. And that's just the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Forget about the sixth or the eighth or the tenth or the Srimad Bhagavatam or the Nectar of Devotion or Chaitanya Charitamrita or Bhava or Prema or Rasa or all. just the very beginning is to practice being equal minded when my boss yells at me, when my wife is a little upset with me, when my toe hurts, when my ear hurts, when my dog dies. We have to tolerate and carry on. And one who can do this is eligible to go back to Godhead. Such an important verse. Just, and imagine how powerful that is. I mean, just for everyday life. No one is saying be callous. No one is saying don't have feeling. Krishna didn't tell Arjuna, oh, you're just uh, a how could you have these feelings? Krishna didn't say that. Krishna said, yes, you care for Bhishma. You care for uh, your different cousin brothers. You don't want the wives of the fighters to be uh, sad. But you have to tolerate it. And don't get into it too much. Because it is their destiny too. And there's nothing you can do about it, really. So, uh, focus on your duty and let it come and let it go. Such important instruction. And it's so, it is, is it's so, uh, it seems to me, every morning when we chant our japa, we can practice that, right? I want to go to sleep. I want to get up and walk around. I want to do this. I want to, <laughs> the mind is like a child. This, 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 right? Just have to ignore it. I mean, not that we torture ourselves or anything, but just not, not that every single little thing we, you know, we, we, we're, we're uh, pressured. We're forced by our body and our bodily conceptions to do. We should be in charge with the help of Krishna. All right, now we'll get up and get a drink of water. All right, now we'll get up and walk around. Okay, in half an hour, we'll take a little rest. Not now. Later, I will eat. Or I will eat now. Whatever it is. So this is, so I was saying, 
you know, imagine, you know, with that kind of uh, ability, just in everyday life, wouldn't it make things easier or, you know, work and relationships and family, and just so much more peaceful, so much less bothered by things. And people will notice. How do you remain so calm? How is that? Uh, could we want to prepare for leaving this world? We want that at the time of leaving this world, we can be calm and think as possible and think of Krishna and give a good example for others of uh, this process of going home back to Godhead. I just saw there's some uh, devoted young lady. She has cancer. And she is, I think, in hospice. Uh, but uh, she's very cheerful. And the nurses and the doctors are very impressed. That, How is this possible? Uh, so this is this is just the side benefit of becoming a little fixed in bhakti yoga. Yeah, it's not that and we may have some fear or we may have some pain. It's not that we're without feelings. But uh, just a different experience. So Krishna says, "Is it not Sarvadama Priyaja, Mame Kamshananam Braja, Aham Tvam Sabha Pape Bhyo, Moksha Shami Mas? I will protect you from your sins. I will protect you from suffering." Krishna says. That doesn't mean necessarily that there won't be any kind of suffering, but to the extent that we uh, embrace. Krishna's instructions, our suffering will be greatly reduced. And that's good. I think that's, that's a, that's a, I'm happy with that. <laughs> I think I'm almost done with expecting there won't be suffering. Uh, there will be, you know, whether we're devotee or not. Uh, but it, it can be greatly, greatly reduced. And devotees can have the most peaceful life than any human can have. Bhaktodam Jagatapasam Sabaloka Maheshwaram Suradam Sababhutanam Yajgatva Shantam Richati. That those who understand me as the supreme pr proprietor, the controller, the enjoyer, the friend, Bhaktodam uh, Jagatapasam Yajgatva Shantam. They attain a supreme peace. So I, I think we can we can be happy with that. That's good, you know. Uh, much, much better. As Srila Prabhupada uh, actually writes in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in the story of Ajamil, he says that every devotee should try to appreciate the difference between a life with Krishna consciousness and a life without. And I don't do that as much as I should, but uh, sometimes I try and do that. Uh, I try and think, especially in the morning when we're having our sadhana. So here I am. I'm chanting Hare Krishna or Mungo Arti or Guru Puja. What are the people across the street doing right now? Really, what are they doing right now? What is their life? Maybe I'm thinking, oh, this is hard. I have to chant. I have to control my mind. But at least I'm on the path of going back to Godhead. These people across the street or down the street or in the next town, they may know nothing, even a little, of their own uh, identity. They may know nothing about Krishna. So how fortunate I am. So Srila Prabhupada uh, writes like this, that we should try to appreciate what is the difference. What is the value of this Krishna consciousness compared to someone else's life? and turn it over in our head so that it uh, can be real. So I'll stop here at any questions or discussion. Hare Krishna Prabhupada, thank you so much uh, for the session so far. Prabhupada, a few questions. Uh, first of all, today is Guru Purnima, so um, uh, thank you very much for guiding us. Uh, you've been a Excellent guru to all of us. Uh, I think the whole group agrees with that. Uh, and thank you and kindly bless us so that we can walk on the path. Um, for you, you might have to think uh, about um, 
uh, what the, the people across the street um, are uh, thinking. But for us, I mean, we can just see two years ago what we were. I mean, we were the same people that you see. We didn't have any ideas about Krishna consciousness and we didn't know who we are or who we were. Um, and um, we've just started walking on the path and with great Vaishnavas like you uh, who hold our hands and take us uh, through this path, it has made us our lives very easy. I don't know how easy or difficult your journey is, but truly, truly, we are grateful and we really feel uh, blessed that um, uh, we have uh, true Vaishnavas like you taking us, leading us through this path. So thank you very much for what you Thank really you very much. I appreciate appreciate your welcome. kind words and ask your blessings. Uh, I can become a Vaishnava or a much yeah. better, better Vaishnava. <laughs> So I can be who you think I am. <laughs> but, uh, you know, of course, we are, we are all together walking on this path uh, in the shelter of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, our most wonderful elevated Shiksha Guru, and for some of us, Diksha Guru, and, of course, the whole parampara of uh, Vaishnav, pure devotees, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Lord Nityananda, and all the way back to Lord Brahma, so we are all together living, uh, just uh, is it not in the shade you have these big, big, I forget the name of them, there's these big, big trees in Africa, big, big trees, okay, banyan sure. trees, yes. So we are we are in the shade, and so together we uh, share that. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity as we give. Uh, what is that? Is it not that when we help someone cross the street, then we cross the street at the same time, so it's double it's double benefit, we can, uh, you know, if we're profit-minded, we can think, oh, this is a good opportunity. I will cross the street, I will help someone else cross the street, and I will get a bonus for helping someone cross the street. Just like they're in business, uh, in sales, they have these uh, affiliate programs. So then uh, if you sign someone under you to sell the product, you get some commission. And then if that person uh, puts some, uh, gets someone, then you get another commission, a less commission. But So then it becomes built up. So Bhakti Yoga is just like that, really. Uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur uh, describes uh, the uh, marketplace of the holy name. We may have heard uh, that Lord Nityananda Prabhu has opened a shop in the market. And he is selling uh, the divine holy names of Krishna. A most wonderful description. Uh, it is available on the internet. Uh, and then one comes and buys the holy name uh, with the uh, price of one's faith, one's shraddha. And the kind of holy name that one gets depends upon one's payment of shraddha. And then as we uh, share, uh, like affiliates, the opportunity then we get more benefit. So I am especially enthusiastic because I'm so fallen. I'm just, you know, I have pinned uh, a lot of my faith upon this principle that if I can uh, uh, assist in this um, Sankirtan movement, then eventually it will come back to me. <laughs> and uh, it's true, of course. I mean, even karmically, we get what we give. So if we try, however, we can, we don't have to do it directly. We don't have to distribute books directly. We don't have to preach directly. See, that's why this is so, uh, such a wonderful opportunity no one should miss. And it's not even about how much. Just that we think, let me work. And then at the end of the month, I'll give two pice, two pence, one shilling, one pound a thousand pounds, whatever it is, but let me help. Um, let me be of service to Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement, help others to break free from the cycle of birth and death. Anything that we can do, especially consciously like that, without a doubt, we will attract Lord Nityananda, Lord Chaitanya's attention, and they will uh, help us to advance. When I was growing up, as I say, my certain relatives would say, there'll be no talk of God in this. So how am I here? How am I saying this? What? The, how is that possible? 
Uh, because gradually, uh, you know, this is the whole, uh, not the whole, but this is one of the main rails that the train of uh, beta culture runs on, that there are those who are more directly engaged in the service of Krishna. And if we help them and please them, uh, then that connects us to Krishna very much. So we all have the grand opportunity of assisting His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, and this ISKCON society and so many devotees who are busy workers. Um, yeah. Uh, thank thank you. you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, you said tolerate suffering and pain because that too will pass. Uh, but I have a difficulty um, in explaining people to tolerate happiness. They said, if we are happy, I mean, why not enjoy it? Because you are being a killjoy by telling us tolerate happiness. So, Prabhuji, can you please throw some uh, light on that? Why should people tolerate happiness? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's weird, isn't that? I think it sounds very odd. <laughs> tolerate happiness. Uh, but, uh, you know, we hear Srila Prabhupada explaining this, and uh, we may have experienced that when things are very going, when we feel good, yeah, usually uh, the tendency is not to uh, think of God as much, especially in the beginning stages. So generally, people uh, think of God when they're in pain or they need something. I need money, I need job, I need this, I need that. And once you have it, why think about God? <laughs> and it, that's the way it is. You know? So, uh, you know, there are devotees who have, uh, you know, good income and pretty good health. And so you have to be tolerant not to be intoxicated. Yeah, it's a nice day. Thank you, Krishna. Uh, it's easier for me to think of you. But I could still die in the next minute, next 10 minutes, tomorrow. And will I remember you? And I want to remember you. And I'm always in danger. And I always need your help. Even it's a nice day and I had a good meal and I have good relationships. I always need your help. So this, so we have to tolerate uh, the tendency to uh, become uh, slack because we feel good. Even in, even in, uh, not even, but other, if you read uh, books about Astanga Yoga and Hatha Yoga and Kriya Yoga and Raja Yoga, any yoga, I mean a real textbook, there are uh, there's advice. Don't be distracted by the beginning benefit. Don't think, oh, it's so nice. I've achieved everything. I have some peace of mind. No. You want to realize your spiritual identity. You want to realize Krishna. So it's a, does that make sense, tolerating happiness? But those who are in Krishna consciousness and they genuinely feel happy, for them it's not tolerating happiness. It's just a cup of nectar. Yes. Or should they be also tolerating the enjoyment? And, and, why, and why tolerate? Why not? Even better, Lord Chaitanya's example, just like he was walking through the Jari Khan forest. And so his uh, servant, uh, Balabhaja Bhattacharya, was preparing some meals and something. So Lord Chaitanya said, oh, Krishna is so kind to give us this sock, this spinach, and this fire. So we should use every, uh, if we feel something, uh, something uh, favorable, we should thank Krishna immediately. And that keeps us connected. Oh, Krishna, oh, such delicious food. Thank you, Krishna. Now I'm really going to chant your holy name. Thank you. So uh, instead of uh, being disconnected, so connect everything to Krishna. Everything. Everything as an impetus to appreciate him. Instead of, uh, you know, the materialists and the atheists, they are disconnected. They get a good idea how to write a book or how to write some music and they become famous or they make money or at work. They get a good idea. They get a promotion. They don't thank Krishna. So we can, we can, uh, we should avoid that. Stay connected. 
and it's not mundane. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, Srila Prabhupada writes in Bhagavad Gita that the beginning of Krishna consciousness is to appreciate the moon, the stars, the sun, the water, everything. It is not mundane. It's not materialistic. If we make it our goal only to have those things, of course, that's materialistic. But if they come our way and we connect it to Krishna, that's just sanity. That's just, that's just good behavior, right? You know, it's just being a good, ethical, good person, being grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Guruji. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the group? I see that we have Indusa Buniali. Um, that's a new member to the group. Thank you very much for joining in. Is it possible for you to uh, switch on your video so we can welcome you with three hurry bowls? Or maybe not. If, if it's not possible for you to switch on your video, we can still welcome you to the group by chanting three hurry bowls. Thank you. Haribo. Thank you very much for joining in. And we meet at the same time, same link every day. So we will be grateful if you can join in and spare some time. Any other questions or comments from the group? I think we've exhausted our time, so uh, without uh, much ado, uh, can I request uh, Bhakta Mugo? Uh, are you able to uh, end the session for today? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, this beautiful class. Your grace, Dina Sharama. So I would like to request everyone to uh, unmute what you can. Uh, Chant one round of Mahamantra in glorification of Dinasharana Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 the Prabhupada ki jai. His grace Dina Sharan Prabhu ki jai. Shumad Bhagavatam Grantra Shumad Bhagavatam ki jai. Ki Hare Krishna. Sarva Bhakta Brindu ki jai. Thank you.